So I came across something interesting for New York City's weather. So if you lived in New York City, you know how the last three marches were. They had minimal snow. 2020 and 2021 saw only a trace of snow. 2020 would also see a trace of snow in April and also May. Yeah, who would have thought? Well, the weather in 2020 was very weird. We know how everything was weird due to COVID. I mean, when Fairbanks sees their first 80 degree high before Philadelphia, you know something is off. But, um, but, but that's how the last three marches were. They were relatively mild. March 2020 ranked eighth mildest. Um, so at least they had some nice walking conditions during COVID. March 2021 ranked 13th and March 2022 ranked 16th. There were each different things going on. Like in March 2020, only one day in New York City had um, a temperature below freezing and it, and, and it was when it was 25 degrees on March 1st. April would get down to 36 and May would get down to 34, but there would be no temperatures below freezing until October. And even though it was the first October freeze in 32 years, it was still a touch above average. But that October got down to 32 degrees and it was overall a very interesting reality that we had to live with. But moving along, in 2021, what happened that really boosted our temperature up was that, well, in March 2020, we had a temperature of 77 degrees in March. This year, it got up to 82 degrees in March. That was our first time seeing a temperature in the 80s in March in like 30 years. It was one of our warmest temperatures in March. And for Oyster Bay, because it got up to 82 degrees there too, it felt even um, warmer. The local data suggests that in my exact location, it never got above 77. So that kind of helped make that March more mild, even though it got below freezing after that, and even into the beginning of April. In March 2022, there was consistent warmth throughout the month, and a lot of times it was warmer than Oyster Bay because of wind off the water. Uh, hello. But in March 2022, you know, the, both the, of the warmest days with highs of 74 and lows of 50, in Oyster Bay, one of the days was 62.48, and the other one was 66.47. There was another 68-degree day during the month. So, you know, it might not have been as above normal here. That being said, March 2022 was still quite nice. But there were four days in particular that were be well below average and really drained our March temperature. The most egregious was March 28th, which had a mean temperature of only 28 degrees. The ninth coldest for a day, March 28th or after. This is due to the high of 33, which broke a record, as the low of 23 was cold, but not frigid. As far as that goes, of the seven marches preceding it, six of them were significantly below normal. Well, below normal, because March 2018 was only 0.8 degrees below normal, which you can't really call significant. However, 10.4 inches of snow fell, which made it the most, which made it more than the entire winter had that before combined. And I still look up New York City's weather in February 2018, which I still forgot to do. There was even an official cold wave with three or more days below freezing in March, which is only the second time that that managed to happen. But overall, the month 
wasn't too below normal because once you got past the first eight days, which were quite frigid, it did warm up significantly after that date. March 2018 was 2.4 degrees below average and but colder than the previous February. While its coldest reading was 27 and I was 39, which by the way, there was also some significant snowfall in the month. Which I think made that the snow went through the winter as well. That was the case in a lot of um, years actually. What made March 2018 so cold was the chronic cold. You know, how, how there were 15 days in a row that were below normal. I mean, not for New York City, but for Oyster Bay, there were literally five, uh, um, 27 days in a row where it wouldn't get above 50 degrees. I think in the city, their streak was 22 days. I mean, that's chronic cold. So even though it shares some characteristics of some very mild marches, in the end, it's actually quite an aggressive march. So I think... Its lowest temperature was warmer than 2020, 2021, or 2022, which, by the way, um, was the first time in 20 years that we had three or more marches that, in a row that were above average. 2017 was 3.3 degrees below average. It zapped the streak of 20 above average months, although April 2017 would also quickly return to be above average, with May 2017 below average, which interestingly affected the highs more than the lows, even though in New York City, we saw a three-day heat wave in a month. But besides that, it would have been just so much more below average. It's interesting because it's like literally one heat wave and then the rest of the month is chilly, which I did not expect at all. That March was also cold in the previous February. March 2016 was the fourth mildest on record and was 6.4 above average. March 2015 was 4.4, 4, 4 4.8 below average. So maybe I, I can't keep them in 2014 straight. March 2015 was the continuation of the February 2015 polar vortex that led February 2015 to have a very surprising low, uh, a mean temperature of 23.9 degrees, the third coldest February in the 10th coldest month. And in a surprise to everyone, it wound up being colder than even 1979. That's because in 1979, it was a deep freeze, but then the final eight days were eight degrees above average, which, which made up for it. Whereas in February 2015, there was no such relief. And the relief will not come until the second week of March. And even then, I mean, there'll be 18.6 inches of snow that entire March. So that March will be colder than the preceding December. And December 2015 was also warmer than March 2014. Very interesting. 2013 March would also be 2.4 degrees below average. And with climate change affecting March the most, you might be surprised by this, but that's just the reality. And in a lot of years, the snowiest month of the year is in March. That wasn't the case in 2014 or 2016, and obviously not in the last three Marches, which is why this video is to show you why, despite the last three Marches being um, feeling spring-like, a lot of the previous Marches have felt winter-like. Although there are some more wintry days, but they can push this into spring. I mean, 2020 had a winter-like day on May 9th, for crying out loud. 